Donald Trump is working overtime to explain to potential GOP voters what sort of man he is. We know a little bit already. He is an unrepentant misogynist. He's a child, and he manages to make Dick Cheney look like a skilled diplomat. But there's got to be more to him than that, and we want to help out at the Young Turks. So Jared Jackson has put together some of his past appearances in the media. We're going to find out what he's for, what he's against, what he is at his core. My new game is Trump, the game, Trump. The game where you deal for everything you've ever wanted to own. Play Trump, the game from Milton Bradley. I think you'll like it. When it comes to great stakes, I've just raised the stakes. Trump stakes are the world's greatest stakes, and I mean that in every sense of the word. Green Acres is the place to be. Farm living is the life for me. Land spreading out so far and wide. Keep Manhattan, just give me that countryside. This may be the best of all. Oh, you dirty boy, you. Oh, oh. Donald, I thought you were a gentleman. You can't say I didn't try. I would love to hear what Mr. McMahon is saying. Oh, oh no! Ah! Oh no! Oh my god! Oh, oh my god! Ah! Okay, so that looks preposterous. The idea of <laughs> Obama doing Obama the game. <laughs> 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 Sounds hilarious, right? I can't imagine Hillary Clinton. The greatest Clinton, halal stakes ever. <laughs> Hillary Clinton clotheslining Vince McMahon. I can't see any of that happening. And the Rudy Giuliani thing was deeply disturbing. <laughs> um, having said all that, I actually think that helps him. I agree. I agree. I understand that going in. We put it together, obviously, to make fun of him. And that is a tiny sampling of all the stuff that he you, has done. You mean you think that it helps him help. with the voters that objected to Obama going on between two ferns because it was too <laughs> show busy? Mm -hmm. That's that's who it helps him with, right? Absolutely. It, yes. It's insane. Yes, somehow it does. The uh, So I, I found the story while that was going on. Uh, what was with the, the, the putting his head in between the breasts, what was happening there? That was a Saturday Night Live skit, but I don't know oh. why he did that because we didn't get the full context. It was of Rudy skit. Giuliani. Yeah, it oh, was, that was in drag. Yes. Oh, yeah. That was in Rudy Giuliani. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's funny that you didn't pick that up. I didn't pick that up. No. <laughs> I mean, I, I got that it was someone in drag. <laughs> it was. It was <laughs> oh, good. Okay. Yeah, well, was, that's a relief. It was two Republican presidential candidates yeah. doing a skit where they do sexual assault of a woman, a man in drag. <laughs> <laughs> so, the senators uh, at least keep it in the bathroom. So uh, this is a story that was in yesterday's Politico that, that, that if you run through the Flesh Kincaid grade level test, Donald Trump scored like a, at a fourth grade reading level based on his responses in the debate, which was pretty low. Ted Cruz earned ninth grade status. Ben Carson, Mike Huckabee, Scott Walker scored at the eighth grade level. John Kasich was next lowest to Trump. Trump was last. Kasich came in at the fifth grade level. But his low score at the debates here wasn't a fluke. His comments from an August 11th news conference in Michigan earned a third grade score. Do you ever have one of those moments where suddenly a new cloud of realization dawns upon you and something you've been wondering about suddenly becomes crystal clear? Donald, poll, Donald Trump's poll numbers have suddenly become crystal clear to me. That the fact that he speaks at that level of comprehension, he's connecting with people that other candidates don't connect with. That, you know, yeah. that, 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 you're only half kidding. That may be totally I, I right. am only, at most, half but, kidding. But flat, it says, flat, flattening the English language whenever he speaks without a script, Trump relies heavily on words such as very and great. That's part of it, too. Like, we don't yeah. make fun of him for that. But, you know, whenever I get a, a script in any way from anything, I take out literally every very that's in there. Yeah. We don't need to say it. We don't that's need, great. We don't need to say it. Every very comes out. That's and, very great. Uh, and he says the pronouns, of course, we and I, those are his favorite words. And then there's the losers, total losers, haters, dumb, idiots, morons, Dumb-dums. stupid, dummy, disgusting. Uh, all this stuff, right, that is, and, and I've never gotten anybody who doesn't get that and who more. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, he does none of that registers with him and the overall like after a while you listen to him for any long stretch and you're like I mean he's just an incredibly simplistic guy and I'm glad that we have a 
we have a test now. Again, yeah. I don't suggest that like this this little piece of information is suddenly going to click and people are going to go, oh, wait a minute, this guy's dumb. I'm going to stop supporting yeah. him. That ship has sailed. They I'm, don't care. But I'm not he saying Sarah he's dumb. Him. I'm saying he knows how to communicate mm -hmm. in a dumb way, mm -hmm. and it's yeah. very effective. I think he is dumb about that. I mean, I think he's okay in a boardroom and can, I guess he, I, you know, his hype is that he gets deals done. I don't even know. I doubt that's even true. Yeah. yeah, he no, goes he, bankrupt a lot for a guy who's supposed to be smart. That was business. one of his great answers, by the way, just very quickly sure. about that. That he was like, "Hey, man, the laws allow me to go bankrupt and help my business, so I do it. I take right. advantage of the laws." Yeah. That I that was, that answer I like. He was prepped for that one. But by the way, the thing that he makes me that question question him as a businessman, he apparently put together this deal to launch Trump Steaks, and they had meetings, and the best slogan they could come up with is "The greatest steaks in the world." Seriously? No, but again, that goes yeah. to the yeah. point yeah. about being a third grader. Yeah, I don't know. But got... you don't need to say scintillating steaks. Well, oh, sizzle, Anything scintillating. Maybe there's something interesting there. People aren't interested in interesting. They're, <laughs> oh, it's great. They're interested in, is it a great steak? It's a great steak. Let me tell you something. On the other it's fantastic. Hand. If you don't like it, you're a dummy and a loser.